So that's gonna be one of the songs on our EP that we're recording. That little solo snippet. Uh, to to one of the questions you're gonna ask us. Anthony Aprelli and Tristan Grimm are two guys with a passion for music who desired nothing more than to create music for the world to see. Eventually, they both put their lifelong dream into action and formed a group called Seven on Pump One, who have been both achieving goals and setting new ones with each milestone. I, it it kind of started with me. Um, it, it used to be called Insushin, and I it was me and a friend of mine that played drums, Matt, in high school. Um, and that's when I like decided I'm going to be in my own band. <laughs> Um, oh yeah, by the way, I'm Anthony Prilly. What was the other part of that question? Yeah, uh, your position. Oh yeah, so uh, I play guitar, I sing songs, and I uh, I write songs with Tristan. Yeah, we switch between, well, how it usually goes is if I'm singing a song, Anthony usually does lead. And if Anthony's singing a song, I usually do lead, but we sometimes take our own solos. In sixth grade, um, we were in the same homeroom. So yeah, the first day of middle school, I remember, well, sometime in middle school, I remember Anthony brought the pick of destiny from... Dude. <laughs> Let me tell you a little bit about Tristan. Tristan brings a lot to the table. Tristan's a good songwriter. Tristan's got a nice tenor uh, range male singing voice. <laughs> Chops, he's got a really good ear. In fact, what I didn't answer in the earlier question, which I should have, was that Tristan and another friend of mine at the time are actually two of the ones that really inspired me to start playing because I had friends close to my circle that were, you know, playing music. And I was like, well, I gotta fit in, you know. Green Day Guitar Hero is not enough. So, I, you know, I started playing guitar more. We started learning Green Day covers together. And yeah. So Tristan actually has, like, it, it's played a huge role in getting me into playing music. We've just, me and Anthony, we've been playing gigs since last year. So, uh, yeah, we're just, me, Anthony, and John, we're trying to get more gigs. We're trying to record an EP right now. Other than just playing, you know, I, I book a lot of the gigs. Um, I order the shirts. I make all the phone calls, and John's been doing a lot. John's cool. I'm John Harry. I play the drums in seven on top one. Last summer, I joined. They were they were gonna hire me to play on an album that they were recording. We met at this this one show. I heard the two of them play. I think it was Afterglow. I remember specifically. The the harmonies were just unreal. So I just I fell in love with it. And I was like, these guys are ridiculous, and. Um, a buddy of mine, Jeremy, was actually recording and mixing our entire EP. An amazing engineer. He's um, He met them through the first show that was at this venue, and then he told me about them for the second, and that's how we kind of got together. Me and Tristan were on a very long, long quest to find a drummer and a bassist. We would meet up and do our duo acoustic thing. We're like, when we get a drummer and we get a bassist, it's going to be crazy. We'll be a full rock band. Yeah, so when that, we're, we're looking for people on Craigslist and at school and working. Uh, we did this barn, like, it's not a barnyard, it was like a garage show. Um, and it was a garage it show. It was called Back at the Barnyard. It was barnyard. called Back at Barnyard, but it was a garage show. Thanks, John. So we see this band playing, um, and they're pretty good. And then uh, there was this other band that played, and John, they were also pretty good, and John was in both of them, and he was playing drums. And we are like, this guy's like, I hear he's 16. He's like, freaking amazing. Like, he's really freaking good. Um, you know, we got to chat in a little bit. Because um, he was really close friends with the sound guy who we became friends with at, at these little garage shows. We went to two of them. Um, and then, you know, we all descended up 
kind of becoming friends, and then John, we asked John to fill in for bass. And the first practice I showed up, they originally wanted me to fill in for live bass. Not, nothing to do with the drums in the slightest, because they had a drummer. And we found this guy um, at the college uh, that I go to, um, and he's kind of a drummer. He like, did orchestral stuff for band and whatnot, and he kind of played around on a kit. But he wasn't like filthy the way John is. <laughs> The bass makes the song so nice. Uh, I, my name is Caleb Corey. Uh, I am the wide receiver and the bassist of Seven on Pump One. They're one of the most, they're just one of the most tight bands that I've ever played with. I can work with them really well and the workflow with them is like none other because they're just so, what's the word I'm looking for? They're just so to the point. <laughs> Doubted myself a couple times just throughout my music career. Um, typically, or notably, I doubted myself uh, before I went to Orange County Community College because I had no idea what I was doing as a musician at that time. I didn't really practice, I just sort of played, and that kept me, I'd say that hindered me a lot from being the musician that I am today. There's always doubt, and a lot of the, most of the doubt is honestly yourself, because people, you know, people say, oh, you suck, or, you know, some people don't, just not like you, some people might be, you know, jealous, some people might, you know, genuinely think that, like, you suck. Like Anthony said, self-doubt is probably the hardest thing to overcome. You gotta take everybody's praise with a grain of salt. You can't be a musician unless you doubt yourself. That's kind of just how it goes. There's always the, the thought in the back of your head, well, there's pretty much always someone better somewhere, so what am I doing? I'm a quiet person by nature, as you can probably tell by this interview. <laughs> I'm a little shy, but, um, yeah, like, coming out to sing and, like, your first couple gigs, it's always pretty nerve-wracking. So, um, and then I felt that way again, but like after years playing guitar, you really didn't feel nervous or playing bass on the stage, but coming out to sing, it started to get nerve-wracking again, but now that's pretty much subsided. I'd say the hardest part about the whole thing was trying to get everybody in the same room at once and to get everybody kind of like on the same agenda and you know I used to not do that properly you know I used to take a very like authoritarian approach because I was just like let's all meet up let's let's do this let's let's all be available at this time you know and life just doesn't work like that the drums are an extremely difficult instrument to move around practice where you want them to and you know being a, being a drummer kind of sucks sometimes you can't you can't, Anthony knows, you can't really play at volume virtually ever because it's just, it's too damn loud. So it's, it's kind of frustrating to, you know, actually play the instrument. But as soon as you get going, it's, it's really nice. My main thing when I was trying to think of names, and again, I didn't think of this one, but when I was throwing ideas out, I just wanted a name that was like, you know, you hear it and you think of certain songs. And oh, now wow. when you think of Green Day, it's like they have such a career behind them. Oh, a huge following. So. Yeah, and I, I'm hoping that one of these days you guys are going to yeah. get to that. And Thank I, you. You know, if that's what you're aspiring to and that's what you're trying to do. ultimate long-term goal, I'd say at least from like my perspective, is to just be able to do it as our primary, you know, source of income. So yeah, primary, booking agent, we'll you know, just every gigs and yeah. 
we want to be able to do it for Maybe our a, careers. You hopefully, know. have it. Hopefully, a manager if we can't self manage it. Yeah. yeah. I just want to get our music like well, people will, will hear it. So we can keep going, and then, and then while we're, you know, while we have the ability and you know the, the, the means to just keep going and have this be what we do, like with our lives, then we could have more like in depth albums, more in depth songs. We could really get like really, really into it, so that we can make something that's like larger than life, and it'll really hit people. Tell us uh, the songwriting process for uh, Seven on Pump One. Of yelling. All right, so either one of them will have an idea to start with, and we could just kind of grow from there and we'll all just kind of jam it out until we come up with something decent. Like, right now it's not definite, I'm just kind of moving stuff up as we play it. And there's like some improvisation, yeah. even in the finished songs, you know, there's a certain, like the solo on Drift Toy to kind of improv around on, you know. Or, like maybe I'll just be playing a beat, or he'll just be playing a riff, and we'll end up just kind of playing off each other like right in the moment like he'll just start playing and we'll all just kind of join in and the song will grow from there progression that we're really nice with the chords I, don't know, I couldn't tell you what they are so anime <laughs> That's how it would start. Sometimes we come in with complete songs in mind. That's true. And we're also, like, yeah. John, you're playing exactly this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's, sometimes it depends. Demos, yeah. yeah, it's situational. We usually, like. we usually come in with like an idea of what we want the whole song to be. Sometimes, if if that's the case, if that's how that's the song's written, and we usually we tweak our own parts, and then we mm -hmm. all kind of you know Quaker it out. We all Normally, we'll votes. yeah, we'll start out with like the structure. As soon as we get that done, we'll kind of nitpick from there. We'll figure, okay, well, if a solo is going to go here, what kind of style do you want the solo to be? Are we going to put harmonies here? You know, we'll kind of just take it bit by bit and figure it out. As Anthony mentioned before, they've been hard at work on their very first EP, which they've been working alongside Jeremy, their main go-to audio engineer at West West Side Music, a small studio where musicians go to record albums and more. Yeah. All right, let's do, let's do a whole thing. Um, hi, my name is Jeremy. Um, I work at West West Side Music in Cornwall, New York, um, and this is my full-time job. And then what can you do after that? Okay, cool. Let's do that. Uh, essentially what I'm doing today um, with Anthony and uh, Tristan and John from 7 on Pump 1 is um, taking sound from the analog domain and bringing it into Pro Tools digitally. Um, via all of the outboard equipment that you'll see around here. How did you meet 7 on Pump 1? Um, I was doing live sound um, just to make a couple extra schmeckles and um, I, I saw them play and originally it was just uh, Anthony and Tristan um, doing acoustic um, acoustic sets and um, Anthony was using a cajon and a um, a, uh, a sample, a sample pad, like kick sample, what was it? It was like a stomp box. Stomp box, like sample stomp box. And I, I just fell in love with their music and we started talking and um, here we are, you know, uh, months later. So, yeah. Uh, how long does it usually take to uh, record all these songs? Um, it depends on how uh, frequent you're in the studio and how many hours you put in a day. Um, but if you're going to do it, you know, eight hours a day, you know, every single day, um, it could, you know, take a month, you know, for an album, you know, and then you have the idea of, okay, mixing it and mastering it and your know, visions and stuff like that, you know, so it takes a while. It takes a long time. It's clear by the members of 7 on Pulp 1 that their devotion and determination to succeed, 7 on Pulp 1 has a great future for its Don't do it for any reason other than like that's what you want to do. Just keep on doing what you're doing, because if you like what you do, then somebody else is bound to like what you do as well. I, I was like, I was looking at the crowd while we were playing, and I would notice whenever I was really feeling a fill, and I played something just that was filthy. I noticed people who weren't like 
who are just kind of standing still would start to nod their heads. And I saw that while I was playing, and I was like, I did that. That she.